Hi, welcome to The Gainsplainer. I'm Jeff The Gainsplainer and today I'm gainsplaining Alibari, a nice cup of tea. So Alibari is a worker placement game. You have two workers each. The places where you are placing those workers are up on this line of cards. Each card does something slightly different. Once all of the workers have been placed, we then go in order of the cards, in order of number, working our way along. The number of spaces available on each card will change with the player count. So in a three play game, there'll be a third one of these ones available. On a one or two play game, there's only two. On a four or five play game, there's four spots available. The first player is the player who has this marker. What you are trying to do is gain points. How you gain points is entirely up to you. There are so many different ways of doing this. So the first one, is you can take three of these cubes in. At any point, if you have one of these green cubes, which is the chai cube, you can use it to do the action at the bottom of the card as well. If the player is there, they'll just take three. You can only take one of these chai. What this does is if I take that one, I would move my marker up one on the chai. The maximum I can have in a two player game is four pieces of that chai on a four or more player game, I can have five and six on a five player game. If I take one of each, that's absolutely fine. That just goes into my stuff that I can do. If there was a guy standing on that second spot, he now only has the choice of these, but he also gets the first player marker and is regarded as first player from now on. Moving on to the B card. If you have a guy in the B card, that allows you to dig. Digging, comes down to this line and where you're up to on this line, which is a three at the moment, which means that if he chooses to dig, he stays at the left-hand end of this group of cards, he digs three pieces and puts them into his supply dirt. He's important in the supply. And then he'll put one of his markers just there. That shows that he has one point at the end of the game, but will also come into play in a little while. And once again, that can be done by two players. If you place some chai on that, you'll also get to dig another three. So he could place some chai to dig those three out and place his marker there. When you get up to these heavier ones, you'll notice these pieces are five pieces of dirt. So you actually need to dig 11 times to take all of that out. The rule with digging is you must dig the amount that it says, even if that just leaves one or two pieces on a spot. If another player comes in and then digs, then they will get the points from that spot. This location allows you to do three actions. That's about trading. So let's just say that's what his groupings looked like. He could trade three of this ore for one rail. He could do it again for a second rail and then he's able to trade two dirt for one of the steel, which would come out of the bag. And any of these iron go back into the bag. Steel goes back into that bag as well. Dirt just comes into a communal pile over there. If I was to spend the chai, I would be able to continue to trade in my orange ore for track at two pieces and I can do as many as I had. So if I had 20 pieces of ore, I could trade that into 10 pieces of track. This is the reason for the track. At the moment, we can build one track per turn. If that gets moved up, and I'll talk about how these move around in a moment. If that does get moved up to there, you can now build two pieces of track per turn. What building track looks like is building along this rail. We start down in this town. Please forgive me for not saying words because I'm sure I'll mispronounce them and people will have a go, so we'll keep moving on. But if this guy chooses to spend one track, he is laying that track there. What that has done is that has opened up this, this, and this station for people to be able to claim, and I'll talk about claiming them in a second, but the next time someone lays some track, they will lay it here, etc., etc. Now, going here, that has pushed him forward one 
chai because of that little sip. If he spends some chai, that would allow him to lay two more pieces of track if he wished to. Moving forward to the E card. Now, what happens here is by having your worker there, you are able to claim one of these items. So say for example, he wished to claim this one. If he had three tea leaves, he could trade them in for that. That gives him 12 points at the end of the game, by the way. Or if he doesn't have any tea leaves, he may choose to trade in one track for the two track that are listed just there, so it gets two back. Or if he goes here, he could trade in two stone resource for four points at the end of the game and an extra worker for his next turn. That only appears for his next turn. Once he's used that extra worker, the extra worker goes back to the tea house. I'll talk about that extra worker in a little while anyway. Or he could choose to turn in one of his tracks to get one of these train cards. The other half of this card is talking about collecting one of these train cards. What the train cards do is they allow you to, if you have one, you can spend one of your chai, so come down on this track, to release your third guy for one turn. So that gives you extra guys to work with. It also gives you nine points if you still have that train at the end of the game. And there's some small writing of the benefit of having that train working for you uh, in the bottom of each card, and the top left-hand corner has the cost. So if he, for example, wished to pull in this one, it would cost him two track. He would gain one chai, which pushes that forward, and that gets removed from the game. And that's the case with any chai, by the way. Every single time one of these green cubes comes up, just push yourself forward on that track, remove it from the game. And this is saying whenever I use a stockyard with a worker, I would gain one tea leaf. The stockyard is the A section. And that would just sit there in amongst the stuff that that guy has. Using a chai allows you to do this action a second time. This particular location allows you to take one of these three cards. There's a benefit that can, is a one-off benefit. So once it's used, it kind of, it will sit like that in front of you. When you use it, you'll turn it sideways to show that it's used. And also gives you points if you've been able to collect things through the game. So with this one, if you have been able to get two of your markers on these spots, and you have two markers on the train station spots, you would get 17 points. If you have five markers, on the train station spots, you'll get 40 points. If these are both in front of you at the end of the game, and you have six markers out, you would actually take the five markers off the board and put them there. You would not have enough markers to get these points. So you need to balance up what you're holding and what you're actually going after throughout the game. The chai bonus on the F card is that you would spend one of your chai to remove the cards from that lineup and reveal three new cards. Then this last one is trading in leaves. And I'll talk about how you get leaves in a moment, but you can trade in any number of leaves. For every leaf that you do trade in, you would push up on this track. So if I'm there, I might choose to trade in two leaves to push me up to the top. And that's the basics of the turns and turn orders. So. The next thing that happens once you've been through that process once is we restack the contract card. So if this one had been taken, this card would push forward and no longer be available. That one would go to the end and two cards would come out of here. If this card had been taken, these two would just push forward to the end. No cards would be dismissed. So two more are revealed. The next thing we do is we adjust the weather. So we're looking at the next face down contract card. That's showing rain, which is this marker. These guys all move down one. On future rounds, say that's the next one. This one comes up, that all moves down one. Because it's sunny, the tools moves forward two spots. The track work moves forward one spot. If it happened to be sunny again on the next round, 
So let's just say, for example, it looks like that. The tools would move forward again. Notice this marker. What that is talking about is these. So for every one of these that you have available, you are taking one leaf. If this is made to move up to there, you're taking two leaves. If it's down to there, you're taking half a leaf. So you actually need to have two things over there to make that available. That's how you gain leaves. The more of these you have, obviously, the more leaves you're going to be able to get when that happens. So it's here and here, and there is another time that it happens just in there. But I'll talk to you about that in a moment. If the rain is the next one in, we reduce the amount we can dig by one. We reduce the number of train lines that we can put down by one. So if it was here, we'd still be able to put down two. If it's there, back to one but we increase the number of leaves that will come out of each of the farms. If it's clouds, we reduce the number of leaves that come out from the farms, and these tokens go up on B and D, making those actions unavailable for the next part of the game. We then restock the cubes in the stockyard, which in a two-player game is six cubes, in a three-player game is nine cubes, and in a four or five play game, it's 12 cubes. And if that's what's come out, whenever these white cubes come out of the bag, they come down to this rondelle and get placed starting here on the next spot around. So what these are talking about is, on this one, we excavate the next two spots of the T, areas or the farms and we put the the games markers on them in this one we increase the crop harvest by two which is pushing forward there if another one comes out that is saying that the, or the next traction has been laid by the game then the next one comes out that completes an, a station area so what that's actually talking about is any of these spots that haven't yet been taken by anyone, let's say for example, he'd done that one, get filled up by the gate. You do not touch this town. This is always available for us to be able to grab, but this is how the game is gonna push itself forward. The other thing that happens here is these three cubes go back into the bag. Coming around, we are coming to the equipment maintenance. And what this means is for every one of these trains or equipment that you have in front of you, you need to pay either two chai or one of these metal bars to be able to keep it. If you can't pay that, you lose the piece of equipment back up there. If it had a chai on it, you do not replace that, however. This one, the sixth spot, has a tea harvest. So in a tea harvest, this player would get one leaf of tea because he only has one farm and you also lay one piece of track and then back to the first one which is put those three back in the bag as well as taking out the next two digging spots or excavation things in the farms. The game continues until the track has reached its destination so this is the final station that can be built. The game finishes at the point where the last track space has been claimed or completed by either any of the players. If you are playing a two-player game, the opponent will get to play an additional round by themselves before the game ends. Otherwise, the game will end at the end of that round when everyone's claiming stuff. Then you start claiming points. So anyone who has points in here will get to claim them. Anyone who has points on those station spots will get to claim them. Anyone who has these will get to claim those points. Then you go to contract cards. So if you have this, you then take your markers off and put them over here. So once you've got five markers there, that's 40 points. Or if you've got this card, that's talking about coming off these cards. Uh, you can move the indicated number of leaves out of your supply to get those ones etc. If you can't move enough markers over into a card to get the points, don't move any markers, just leave them. They may be able to be used for other cards. 
then you'll score the points for your position on the chai track, add half a point per leaf that you have left over, or one point for every two, uh, but you don't round that down, so that half point might win you the game. And then each equipment, which is those guys, that you have in front of you is also worth nine points. The player with the most points at the end of that is the winner. And that is everything for Alibari. I hope that this is helpful. Please go ahead and watch my games play to get a feel for how the game plays. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you'd like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.